A couple days ago, I put a poll on my channel asking you guys if you wanted to do Zeus tutorial spec ops, preparing missions for multiplayer or other. 33% of you wanted Spec Ops Infantry and 9-11, 22% of you wanted to know how to prepare a mission for multiplayer, and 11 of you wanted to know how to do Zeus tutorials. So what I've decided to do is kill two birds with one stone and make a Spec Ops Infantry mission, show you the process, and then I'm going to show you how to make it multiplayer compatible so you and your friends can play it together. And once we've done that, next tutorial I put out will be probably a Zeus tutorial, and just for the memes, I might make a YouTube short for how to do 9-11 in um, 3. Anyway, let's get into it. First things first, when you get into any map, and you want to start making a mission, I open the map, and I start looking. A middle mouse button can will teleport your camera to it. Or you can point your cursor over it, and press F, and here we go, um, where I was pointing basically used a, my markers and created a front line sort of thing and then marked out all my objectives that I was going to be using like Thronos Castle was one of the objectives so I ran over here double click marker objective open color red that's black color red objective alpha there and copy and paste pretty much for this one objective bravo just ignore my bad spelling i'm kind of typing extremely fast to get this dealt with and then on this hill here i put a nice little radio compound so chuck in another objective here and i'm just going to go objective c so I started with that, and then I went over to the castle, and I was decided to... Obviously, I'm going to have to fortify it. I decided I was going to do a cache-destroying mission. So I basically went to supplies, went, searched up cache, and then I found the fear ammo cache, equipment cache, and weapon cache. And I called them C1 for cache 1, C2 for cache 2, and C3 for cache 3, grabbed myself a trigger, and it would check, just for exclamation mark, alive, C1, and again, for C2, and again, for C3, and then on activation, all it did was, all it did was connect to a create task, like so, I am kind of speed running this here for you guys, so don't waste any of your time. Create task, blah 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 blah, and succeeded. And then once the trigger gets fired with this code, it will create the task. However, using one amount one and one one two demolition block will take about five minutes of them cooking off until they actually explode. But then the trigger will be succeeded, but it doesn't happen straight away with the explosions unless you put a heap of explosions on. And obviously, I had to just not keep a cache there. It's got to actually be some interesting stuff. So I grabbed my Chizdiz guys, grabbed the APCs, let them do their own thing by placing this guy on the road and then giving him a lamb's danger. Oh, uh, there it is. Patrol. It's not. That's a bit small for a vehicle. 1500 by 1500. Sync to the vehicle. Now he'll patrol. And I'll go here, and I'm going to get a turret, and let's give them a zoo, and just all this sort of stuff. And I eventually basically just started fortifying it, and it's good to have anti-air stuff and like bigger stuff that will do more damage for one thing instead of compensating with a butt-ton of infantry. So I did end up getting the infantry for a tiny little anti-air pair. And shift, right click, waypoint, shift, right click, waypoint, 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 waypoint over here, waypoint over here, and another waypoint here, and then the last waypoint is a cycle waypoint, so that they will run around in circles. Let's grab alpha 1, limited speed, safe, and open fire, keep formation, done. With that... Now we've got air to air threats for cast players to deal with, we've got this BTR here, and if we want we can have two. We're going to go dynamic patrol pattern, 
uh, eight waypoints. We're going to copy him and paste him again. This one will be a dino for reinforcement. So once they hear gunfire, they'll come back and help out. Now we're going to set up a quick patrol, um, infantry patrol that will basically patrol the outskirts of the area. So 200 works decently well for a foot patrol. So I'm going to grab the leader, sink him to the task of the patrol and dynamic patrol pattern and then i'm just going to copy that open up the map and as you can see you've got the small circle here i'm going to move them all the way over here i'm going to copy so the, the line the circles slightly interlap building a strong 360 security obviously they might not always be together but it works pretty well and then you want to have just a couple pickets here and there and that's this objective set up really quickly. As you can see here, we've got BRDMs. We've got two of them, one here and another one here. But I've done a lot of work just fortifying it, adding a zoo uh, 23 there. Just a barracks here, so they're going to garrison and all run inside. And I think I might actually go teleport units. You got this zoo up here doing its own sort of thing and you've got this little patrol who is quite literally just walking around in circles so they end up going here and then over to this spot and then just keep going like so so then we've also got over here We've got all the patrols. If I open the map, you can see that same prominent ring going around the objective and a couple pickets here and there. Now we've got objective Bravo, which is the exfil point. And if there's got a little tiny village over here and we've got three guys and this is a HVT sort of mission. So I've named the actual group hostiles. And if you want to copy this along, I'll have the code in the description. So it's going cycling through the every one of the units in the group hostile. So you can have as many, you, you can add as many units in here as possible as you want. And you just change this. So currently this is less than two. So when it pretty much equals one or less, and then the remaining guy will surrender. He'll put his hands up and then we can arrest him using cable ties. So uh, you can have a look here, as you see, it goes set captive true, set action surrender for each of every unit. So it loops through and does all that. So all you have to do is have a group, call them hostiles, chuck this. This doesn't have to be synced at all. Just make sure it's server only, chuck these two in there. If you want it to be like only two people left, then you just chuck it to three and so on. Just less than, greater than, simple math. So that will do that, and then the remainder guy will hopefully be the officer, depending if your players target him or not. Put his hands up, and once he put his hands up, we're going to take him prisoner, and then the plan is to get evac somewhere point here by a pilot. And as you can see, we've still got vehicles. We've got a tank here, just driving around, just to give Cass something to do while they wait for the mission to be complete. We've got riflemen, patrols... Another tank here. And you've got heaps of other patrols just all around here. Let's take a look at Objective Charlie. So as you can see, it's a little um it's a little radio tower. And in the radio tower you've got four guys here, and they basically using the Lamb's Danger uh camping task. So you've got the tent here and we have to blow this tower up. And the tower's variable name is T1, and you've got a trigger here, and condition, not alive T1, it doesn't do anything just yet. What I am going to do is go task, create task, inside here I'm going to go assigned, blow up radio tower, and then read the title dummy. And then we can just chuck this trigger into here. And once we blow this thing up with enough explosives, it will give us that little task notification pop up. And you've got more people all over here. 
just making sure there's no loose ends in the area. What we could also do is think like the player, open the map. If I'm the player, I'm probably going to try go into the coast somewhere around here. So you can try and prevent that to give your players a harder time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to Op4 again, grab the bad guys. Helicopter, no, I'm actually going to give them an APC. No, no, anti-air might be smarter. So he's just going to chill up here. And I'll, I'll add a couple of these just to give something to worry about. And then I'm going to have an APC, BTR 70 probably. And he can go task patrol and probably 2000. You guys can't even hear the music on, but it's it's good. It's everybody wants to rule the world. Not the dumb Hunger Games version, but the original. Um, so, we could even have, just, just in case, you never know where the players are going to show up. So you could have a tiny little uh, MG team up in this top story, just chilling. The other guy, in the bottom story, which you can do. And use our trusty friend, Lambs Garrison. And that works. The one very important thing that I like to, that I'd like to highlight is I'm going to be playing this mission, but by using the garrisons and the lambs tasks, like the tasks for the patrols, the garrisons, I don't actually know where the guys are going to be. I know that they will be around somewhere, but I'm not going to know where, where. So I can't really metagame even if I tried. And with this here, once i might even you know what i'm gonna so this is when the cache gets blown up that these guys will be on the way but i have a feeling it might be a bit cooler to grab 100 meters and just add a one in front of it try get 150 meters here oh okay so that's it yeah this trigger here so this is a now i'm gonna go type no, okay, activation, and all I'm gonna do is go and guarded by blue for blah blah blah. No, activation blue four. Okay, so activation blue four, and then I can go detected by op four. So when if blue four, if if the bad guys here detects that blue four is in, like, is actually there, they're actually just going to start opening fire. Sort of, but they will start opening fire. But what we'll also do is instead of having the QRF arrive when the thing blows up, the QRF is going to arrive. Which trigger is this one? I'll figure it out. Okay, this is the trigger we want, this is the trigger we don't want. So delete that. But once they find out we're there, these guys are just going to be on their way in an instant, right up towards us. And my players are going to be, and I'm going to grab a hand-picked US Woodland Infantry, just in case. Now we're going to grab all of these guys, we're going to go Attributes, Playable, we're going to remove this crew as the player. None of these guys need to be playable. Now that these guys are here, we're going to add an arsenal. So I'm going to go to supplies, storage, cargo net. And then I'm going to, in there, paste. It will be paste the virtual arsenal script. I'll put that in the description along with all the other scripts we're about to get into. Now I've got an arsenal. Everyone's there. And we've got... Obviously, if we want our players to come in on a helicopter, we can do that. UH-60, I'm going to place it with a crew and then delete the gunners. And grab the two helicopter co-pilots. The two helicopter pilots. And put them over here. And I'm going to make them both playable as well. Once we load in, AI will automatically take these slots. If we want to prevent that, we can disable the AI while we're at it. Respawn on custom position ticked. Going to markers, system, empty marker. We're playing as blue four, therefore we need to go 
respawn west. If we were up four, we'd go respawn east. If we were independent, we would be not in depth. We'd actually be gorilla, but the proper spelling. So we got west, respawn west for up four, blue four. Sorry. Now we need to set up our ace settings. Settings, game options. Make sure your difficulty is set to how you like it. Configure add-ons. Find Ace Medical. Inside Ace Medical, it's standard Ace settings. They're all edited. Limp on open wounds instead of limp on stitched wounds. If you limp on bandaged wounds, it means you have to stitch them to fix it. Blah 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 blah. Limp fully heals fra uh, fractures. Yes. I've decreased the fraction, the fracture chance all the way. Unconscious wake up chance is 50. Every 50 seconds, once I've stabilized the patient's vitals, aka okay, they're not bleeding anymore, it will basically heads and tails 50% and they'll wake up. FNM from boost, only 2.4 as 50% is already high enough. Fatal damage source, only large hits to vital organs. Do not do some of trauma. Blood drops. If you want those, you can enable them. If you don't, you can disable them. White flashing, I find, is just the most common with the pain effects. If I scroll down more to enable litter, if you don't like all the bloody tissues on the ground and all the other surgical equipment, litter, you can disable that. AI unconsciousness. Make sure it's unchecked. Otherwise, the AI will act really weirdly once you shot them and you'll have to headshot them to finish them. Clear trauma after bandage. If you have actual medics in your little group of friends, make it after stitch, give your medics the access to the surgical kit for the stitches. Allow shared equipment, you want to take the patient's equipment first, just like real life, the medic isn't going to use their own stuff, they're going to use the patient's first aid kit before they start using theirs. Order injector time, I haven't touched those. Allow epinephrine, anyone, if you want to make it only doctors can do injections, you can. Allow locations, make sure that's set to anywhere, otherwise you'll not be able to give it unless you're either in a vehicle and facility, medical facility, nearby any of these. Allow personal aid kit, anyone, anywhere, consume, yes, self usage, yes. Allow surgical kits for medics only, that's all your stitching, locations, anywhere on the field. Consume surgical kit, no, so you can keep on stitching. Self stitching, no, you need two medics so they can stitch each other up. Allow IV, if you want to give each other blood, you need to make sure it's set to everyone and anywhere. Self IV transfusion, if you want, I have just because I play with a bunch of brain dead people sometimes and they aren't very smart. Okay, so that's all set up. If you need an A10, just chuck one in. Once you've done this, make it night time. And I would highly also suggest that you choose a day with a full moon, otherwise your night vision will not be able to see much.